maybe the easiest, meatiest, juiciest, most delicious beef back ribs you've ever had, but wait, with a bourbon apricot barbecue sauce. Bitches. These are beef back ribs. They come like this. I don't know how many there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I, I don't know. There's a bunch of bones in here. But I've left the price on so you could see it. These came from Costco, not sponsored. But look, 17 bucks. 17 bucks for this? It's a lot of really good eating. And I wouldn't be here if this was a complicated thing to do. I don't think we'd be here at all if anything was complicated because we're here to show you how to make your food life better in a simpler way. One bite of these, you'll be in love. You'll want to leave the person that you're with and go to Vegas and find a weird chapel that will actually marry you to these. That'd be creepy. Sam, do you take this meat as your lawfully wedded wife? Uh, I can tell you this. Your active working time is probably 12 to 15 minutes total for amazing deliciousness. Now there is a three and a half hour gap in the middle when they're in the oven, but aside from that, you make them, go, go watch a movie, go play a half round of golf, go do your laundry, take a good nap. It's all good, it's all good. First we make a little rub, we prep them, we get them in the oven, then Bob's your uncle. I think we've done this before, it's very simple. Equal parts, kosher salt, black pepper, and garlic powder. And we mix with a digit. You got that handled? Let's prep the ribs. Here's how they look. Let's actually do it here because there's, there's gonna be some blood. I'm just telling you right now. I think everybody can handle it, but just know that's what's gonna happen. And out they come. Let's go big boys. Ah, perfect. It's not too bad, but I do like to take paper towels and dry them off. You don't need all that yuck. Like this, this for sure that was just sitting there waiting to be dealt with. Of course that's coming off. Get this side good. Flip it over. About the only real work you're gonna have to do is right now. And we're gonna want to take as much of this back membrane off as we can. And here's how you're gonna do that. You're gonna need a piece of paper towel for it and a little knife. Bone, 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 bone. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you can get a little knife under here and just start it like that, this is the part you wanna take off. Now, you get it into a position for whichever handed person you are, you get a grip on it, and if you're living right, you should be able to pull off a bunch, like that. Oh, nice, nice. Ah, almost there, but I know it's coming. Feel very good about this. The paper towel is the thing that helps give you grip. Without the paper towel, it's just a slippery proposition and very difficult to pull off. So you got that. You got a little bit left up here. I'm not so concerned about that. You don't have to make yourself crazy if you don't want to. Max is shooting flies with our bug assault rifle. I'm working and you're effing around. There you go. There, that was it, that last little piece. Now look, if there's weird giant pieces of fat across here that you want to get out, feel free to do that. Like here, I mean, it's on the back, but you probably don't want that. You don't want to do it, don't worry about it. It's not going to be the end of the world. Okay, let's have a look. Excellent. All right, before the rub goes on, one thing, yellow mustard. And not a lot, like this, it's called a binder. It helps bind the seasoning to the meat. We've done this with a, a roast when we've cooked it. And I always need to say, don't think it's going to end up tasting like mustard, because it's not. It's just going to be delicious. Now our seasoning, it goes like this. And you can be fairly aggressive. I mean, it's a fairly big piece of meat. Be aggressive, be -E aggressive. <laughs> what are you, like 16? All right, I don't really give an ass about the back because of this shit stick. Because look, it's just bone and that shit, so forget it, right? Here you are, you're good? Now we wrap it. Here's how I like to do this. One sheet of foil. On goes our friend, like this. Take a second sheet on top, like this. And now we wrap them up. So this side comes up this way. This side comes up this way. You seal here, you seal here. Take the whole kid, I put them back on, and we're ready for the oven. You want the seals tight. You want the steam to stay in. That's gonna help break down the tissue and make it soft and tender. So great. My oven is at 385 degrees. 
This is gonna go in. This was four and a half pounds. It's gonna take roughly three hours and uh, 30 minutes. And then you'll see what happens after that, but you're gonna like it. Oh, and when I come back, we'll be making this amazing barbecue sauce. Our sauce begins with a base of ketchup. Oh, do you see that watery part come out? Yeah. Let me cover it up, it's gross. So we want, I don't know, about a cup or so. Ugh. Somebody's gotta make a non-fart bottle. Is that possible, do you think? Okay, that's good. Cup of ketchup, but a half a cup of a bourbon, whiskey, or your call. Beautiful. Now the part that I think makes it best, apricot jam or apricot preserves, gonna go about a half a cup. Rich, delicious. One of my favorite things to use when sweetening because it doesn't over sweeten. In fact, it sweetens perfectly. A couple tablespoons of Worcestershire, one. Those. You could use liquid smoke if you wanted. I don't think we need to use it. I'm gonna put about three tablespoons, uno, dos, and tres, apple cider vinegar, tablespoon of Dijon mustard, and about a half a tablespoon of garlic powder. Put this on the flat top and we get it warming. All right, so our goal, pretty obvious, mix this all together, bring it to a boil. It'll get there in a minute or two. Just let it do what it wants to do, which is to come to a boil. I know what you wanted to say. You do, I saved my ass on that one. Wait, let me see if that's a better spot. That's the spot. So we're gonna bring it to a boil, just like this, just like this, and then turn it down so it simmers gently. Doesn't need to be bubbling quite this much, but gentle bubbles like this, that's cool. And we're gonna give it 15, 20 minutes. It's gonna reduce a little bit. It's gonna thicken a little bit. It's gonna become great and absolutely destined for greatness on those beef back ribs that are gonna love this. And after three hours and about uh, 40 minutes, you have a big foil packet that we can open. Now just let me prepare you for this. Don't expect anything gorgeous because at this point they're done, but they ain't all that purdy. Ah! Monster looking, but check this out. Oh, do you see this? This is called pullback. Remember the meat was all the way to the ends, he said using his probe thermometer. Not for temperature, but for this. You see that? That's what you want. You don't have to cook to temperature. You can cook to that. And three hours and 40 minutes at 275 gave us this. If you want a temperature, I can tell you, should be right around 200 and something. 195, 201, 203, there you go. Anywhere between 200 and 205, you're gonna be very happy. But we gotta get rid of the oogliness, all right? Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna very carefully, because I like to try and keep them together, we're gonna take them off of here. Wait a sec, nobody move, and put them on the rack. Ow, 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 there we go. Thanks for cooperating, buddy. Get rid of this. Now we take our sauce. Remember our sauce, boys? The bourbon, the ketchup, the everything. Now we glaze away, just like this. If you want this, you don't want to make sauce. You could buy a sauce. You could buy a barbecue sauce, add a little bourbon to it, simmer it for a bit, and you'd be just fine. It might not be this sauce, but it might be better, you never know. But I would rather you cheat a bit and end up with this then go, oh no, I don't wanna make a sauce, so I'm not gonna bother at all. Cheating's fine, unless it's a relationship, then it's not fine. Okay. What about an AP exam? Yes, you can cheat on an AP exam all you want. SATs? Yes, of course. Talking about relationships. Driver's license test? If you can cheat on that, good luck, <laughs> yes. All right, could you serve them like this? Yes. Should you serve them like no. this? No. No, what could you do now? Burn them. Right. No, we're not gonna burn them. You can take them, put them in the oven under the broiler about that far away for about three minutes. Or we bring our big fat torch head and we do it manually because you can see. You can't see what's going on when it's in the oven, really. So this is gonna just take me a bit. Probably should have done the oven anyway. But this will help now caramelize this sauce on top. It'll make it tacky, it'll make it sticky. It'll make it just better. You see what's happening here? To quote Max and his favorite word, when we're done, this is gonna be gorge. <laughs> to quote my dad and use his favorite word, when this is done, it's gonna be fab. I don't think I say fab. Yeah, and I don't say gorge, you dick. You said it yesterday. No, I've never, no. That is not true. About. Gorge? Never said gorge. You said gorge. 
What am I, the editor for Teen Vogue? I don't say gorge. I heard you say gorge. Dick. Wow, I love this. I love this. So once you've done this, once you've got it looking a little bit crispy, some little tiny burn spots, I like to come back with one more painting of the sauce. Just light this time. Oh man. Oh, God, I'm happy about this. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Beef, back ribs. I want to stand them up and show you. Oh, look, I can. Almost. If I could put something behind this. Give me your glass. Nope, I'm going to lose these guys. Well, let's quit wasting time. I want to eat one. So let me take them off of here. That guy's just about to fall apart. We'll get our knife. Let's see if we can do this. Can we cut this guy right? Oh my. Look at that. That is meaty. That's meaty all right. And yeah, there's little pockets of fat, but what's that gonna do for us? Flavor. That Some amazing flavor. flavor. That means flavor if you don't know that by now. <laughs> if you don't you. know what. Should we have a bite? Yes. Look at that. Look at that. What do you think? Perfect earring? If I wore them. All right, you hold on and you just go for it. I knew there was no way I was coming out of that pretty. Big beefy flavor, so tender fork tender, baby spoon tender, but the bourbon and the apricot jam barbecue sauce made this a 12 out of 10. You know how you know it's good? I've got sticky beef stuck all in my mouth and stuff, but damn, it's good. Damn, it's good. You gonna go for it? You scared? This was all about you being able to pull this off without having a grill, a smoker, a whatever, at home. By the way, if you don't have an oven, if you have a toaster oven, same thing. You have to cut them down a bit. Toaster oven. Use it. You've got it. Use it. I feel like King Henry VIII. Whoosh, biting. I need wine. I need women. I need whatever he had. More meat. More, more lamb. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, ShopSDCG.com. I got nothing else. If I keep talking, I'm not eating. And I want to be doing this. And just to illustrate my point about how tender this is, Look at this. It's just, you know how good an omelet that would make? Or a sandwich? Or, or a quesadilla? Or a, or a burrito? Or a taco? Or, I could go on. Should I go on? And yes, it's garlic press time. Oh. Uh, this is number 19, and you get the little uh, cleaner outer thing that I threw away about three seconds after I got it, but I'm sure it's useful. Score. S extra stuff here. All right, and this is going to Jimmy Jams. Jimmy writes, my six-year-old and I always watch, but in the interest of saving time, we do it on two times playback speed. Oh, yeah. Uh, watch this episode today at regular speed, and she said, they sound super weird, like zombies. Did they turn into zombies? Keep up the good work. Hope you guys didn't turn into zombies. Not only did we not turn into uh, zombies, Jimmy Jam, and six-year-old daughter, but you're getting this. Thanks for watching, you guys. The only thing prettier than this is a Sholo Squintly.